Right, welcome. So this month what we're going to be looking at is the SI joint and it's a, a really interesting joint because it has so much that's involved in what's going on and could be quite related to any current problems that you're having and I wanted to sort of discuss both so that hopefully give you a better idea of what's happening in this area. So I've highlighted the sacrum. The sacrum, as you can see, is a sort of triangular shaped bone that sits at the base of the spine and supports your spine. Um, then you have the two ilium on either side, so one, two, and that creates the SI joint. So the SI joint is the sacroiliac joint, so sacrum and ilium, and it's the joint in between the two. Why is this important? Well, you can see your vertebrae, L5, L4, L3, and the fascia joints in here, which commonly create a lot of people's back problems. And you can see the SI joint is right next door. So the reason that this area causes so many problems is because it is involved in the weight transfer. So every time you take a step, every time you're running and you impact on the ground, a lot of that weight transfer is taken through this region. And if I add on the ligaments, you can see there's an extensive amount of ligament support and structure in this area to make it nice and stable it moves a very small amount and there is debate about how much movement there is and whether actually it can move much at all but from working with clients i can tell you um, if i've treated it and treated it well it can have a dramatically positive effect on people's um, back complaints if it's involved and when it's treated badly, it can have quite a dramatic poor effect on, on where they're going. So for, anecdotally, I look at it and I say, yes, this is something that we can have a positive effect on. So the pelvis moves slightly forwards and slightly backwards relative to the sacrum. If it's backwards, those ligaments I showed you are nice and tall and they can take that load as you impact onto the ground nice and effectively and distribute that around the body. If it's rotated slightly forwards, which can happen because of muscle pulls, positioning, or um, an, an actual trauma, accident, fall uh, type thing. If it's forwards, those ligaments are in a slightly or relatively lax position, and you can get slight shearing. That shearing can create problems. Now, the good thing about this relative to back problems is it tends to be very specific. So people will come in and they'll go, it's right there, that's where my pain is. I have a point of pain, that they can really go, that's it, and there'll be pain that will radiate around it. But it's having that point of pain in some very specific things like getting in and out of bed, like getting in and out of the car, that really stress the SI joint as we twist and, and, and rotate through the area that creates that problem. Back pain can obviously refer down and cover the SI joint, and you've also got the hip, which can also create problems in the area. But the thing you're looking for, if there is an underlying primary SI joint problem, is that you're gonna have that point of pain that you can put your finger on and go, it's right here. Possibly touch it, it might be a little bit deeper than your finger. So I think it's important you understand if you've got low back pain, it might be the SI joint that's driving the problem. There certainly doesn't mean that there isn't anything going on in the low back that doesn't need to be addressed. But personally, I tend to find if we correct the SI joint first, if it's involved, it has a positive effect on getting everything else going and getting us into the right result at the end.